What's up everyone, welcome back to another Revit video. And in this video we're going to look at building pads. Ooh, it's topography, but it's also a building pad. So before we get into it, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, which I hope you're here to learn something, you know, please demolish that like button. It really, really helps me out. It tells me that you might have learned something or you just like the video. So that helps either way. Alrighty then, get into it now. Building pads. So, well, we need... A topography to work with and fortunately I have one here you might have seen it in previous topography videos go check those out they're different you know you don't need to watch those to necessarily watch this and learn about building pads but nonetheless that would be helpful so where can we find building pads and then what are they well we can find them in massing and site of course it makes sense and then here's a building pad and so it adds a building pad from a closed loop basically making a sketch on top of topography so first of all, what is a building pad? Well, imagine the building pad itself is like, you could use it as like your level one floor, like actual floor. And I'll, I'll get into all of that in a second, but it can serve as your level one floor or it can simply serve as something to move dirt around <laughs> because we will see that not only does it move dirt around, but it can act as a floor. So all of that can happen at the same time. It's kind of up to you whether you want to document it that way or if you just want to model it that way and move on. So here we go. Um, I am, you can look at it, you can work at this in 3D or, you know, 2D. I think it's better to work in 2D when it comes to building pad because you probably want to be more precise, at least more precise than what I'm going to be. So I'm going to click on building pad and we're familiar with all these sketch tools. Uh, that's really nice. So I'm, I'm just going to sketch about where the building ought to be and you can see all these jagged areas kind of about where the building is or should be so let's just I, again i'm not going to be precise i don't necessarily care and you'll quickly learn why i don't really care and it's really about what the building pad does to our topography so let's go ahead and finish our sketch it obviously needs to be a closed loop how can we test that well i can select one i can hide i can highlight one basically hover over a line i can click tab and if I s click and see that all of these uh, connection points or intersection points are like this unfilled, this outline circle, that means they're actually meeting together. So that's perfect. If I pull this apart and I see this, I can see solid circles. That means I actually have endpoints that are not connected together. So we want to make sure they're obviously connected. And as soon as I do that, I can see, boom, I get this giant flat area. And this is kind of the point of a building pad because it allows me to literally determine an elevation for one, but it, it just flattens out the entire site of the entire topography. This is good and bad. Obviously, uh, it's not necessarily good or bad in the sense that you don't want to do it, or maybe you do want to do it, but just kind of know what, what it does. This is how the real world technically works. If I come into 3D, we can see how this is impacting so we can see that because my level one is like significantly lower than the actual topography, you can see it's like digging this giant hole in that entire topography. The reason it's not cutting this one is because that's a separate topography. From a separate video, we can just kind of ignore that. Now what I'm going to do here is maybe I want this at level two. I don't know why, but if I, you can see what happens. Um, when I pull this up to level two, obviously everything's going to come up to level two. So this might be kind of hard to see, but... Uh, technically, this is basically like a wall of dirt. Um, may or may not be exactly what you want, but let's come over here to my site. I'm going to draw a section just to give you an idea of you know, what's happening in section because that, that is important. And a lot of what the building pad can do and how it can help us out you know, really is in section. So we go to this section now. And we can see, well, we obviously need to expand this. We need to see, we want to see everything that's happening. Okay, and so I'm going to expand these over here so we can make sense of this. Again, I put this building pad at level two, which makes sense as to why. But you can also see the pad itself is basically a floor. And it doesn't have to be a floor. It can be topography. Um, however you want to show it is kind of up to you. Now, the thing to note here is whenever I click this, I'm, I'm just going to change this value a bit, and we can see this move up and down. And you can see it's taking all that dirt with it. Basically, everywhere that the building pad is, wherever it has topography underneath, it's going to basically push or pull dirt up or down to where the building pad is. And so 
it doesn't matter where this is at 25 feet above level 2, it's going to pull dirt all the way up. Or if I put this at minus 20 feet, it's going to push dirt all the way down and actually see it beyond because <laughs> I have my section view set up that way. So maybe I want to fix that for the sake of this. It might make a little bit more sense. So pull this in some and then come back to my section. I can see, yeah, I, there's my building pad and it's clearly cutting. Now if we take this view, for example, and we decide, you know, I want this to be my floor. There's a couple of things that we want to do probably. Uh, we want to, this to actually look like a floor. Maybe that's, I mean, it's likely to be concrete. So the thing about pads are is um, you can actually make multiple kinds of multiple types, um, uh, but there's really not much you can change here. Uh, the main thing being that it's just got a structure, and this structure is like one constant thing. We can change the total thickness. Um, so basically it can be that floor, that main floor, that main foundation, that whatever you want to call it. But, you know, what it's going to be is kind of up to you. So we're going to show, I'm going to show you an example of how it might look if we make this concrete and have this be our foundation, our actual floor or whatever. So anything, all this, whatever, cast in place, cool, one foot, cool also. So we can see, you know, as I come in here, I need to make this uh, coarse, uh, change this from coarse to finer medium to see this. And look, you know, I, it looks like a floor. I, I'm pretty pleased. That's kind of good enough. It's at the right elevation. Everything's working. And of course, as I change this again, it's going to absolutely move the dirt and everything to what we might want to see, you know, push and pull. Okay, so maybe now, and this is, this is fine. I've used building pads this way, but maybe we want to do something a bit different. Maybe we want to make our actual floor have more than just concrete because it might be that whenever we ultimately add a floor that we don't want to use just concrete like it's more than just foundation instead of having multiple floors like we did there um, instead of something generic uh, maybe it is this lightweight concrete or this wood joy like none of these really make sense for what i'm doing um, so i'm going to start with the generic duplicate this just call this floor for the sake of what we're doing here and so maybe I do want my concrete here, like we do, like we just made. So there's my cast in place, but maybe I also um, rebuild my floor. And, you know, there's a floor finish on top. You know, it doesn't, it could be wood, it can be whatever it might be. I don't know. It, it's really kind of up to you. So oak floor in here, and maybe this is a half inch. Obviously, you'd probably have more than just <laughs> the wood on top of the concrete, but for the sake of this, it's fine. Basically telling me that I've got more than just concrete here. And so I'm going to just place this kind of here so we can see this in section. All right, so in section, I can see it right there. And of, of course, so at this point, there's a couple things we can do. Obviously, like I said, we can have this, we can have our pad be the floor. And I could just model my, my actual wood as like the finished floor. I could make that a half an inch. I could put that on top of the pad and move on. But maybe I want to have this all one giant you know, floor, like my foundation is my finished floor and everything on top of that is kind of built into one floor. And that that's what makes perfect sense to do that. So what we'd want to do probably with the building pad is a couple of things. And I know this isn't quite at the right elevation, um, but we're going to get it there in a second. So the, with the building pad, again, it has a lot to do with the material. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change this to earth. And I bet you get an idea of what's going to happen at this point. So if I change this to earth, obviously we're going to get the kind of effect in section that we're looking for. So look at that. That that it basically continues the earth. Now you might say, ooh, well, I see the cut from the topography. And all that. Like, yeah, you do. So what is like the next best thing? Like that this is kind of step one. So what's the next thing we could do instead of doing that? Basically, if we never touch the material with the building pad, what could we do instead? Well, we can actually come into our visibility graphics, and I would do this through a template if you're building multiple sections. You might think it's in topography, but we're going to come down to topography and we expand this. We won't see what we need, but it's actually in sight if you can't find it in topography. You might be looking for building pads, but we can see pads, whatever. Pads is fine. And so basically, I'm just going to hide this. You know, The cool thing is that it's going to still do its job, but at the same time, it won't be visible. So here we go. Look, so this is absolutely perfect, at least in my opinion, if I want to build my floor with a foundation and more components on top of it to create not only the finished floor, but the foundation as well. So what we have here is not only my actual floor, but I have 
the cut from the building pad as if it were still visible. And it's not visible, but it's still cutting. So it's doing everything I need it to in section without actually being there and showing up. So of course, what I need to do here is make sure this matches everything. And obviously I need to get this right, but look, exactly that's exactly what I want. And not, I mean, we can't see it. I'd have to change the scale here to something more crazy, but I can see, yeah, there's my actual finish right there. And so you can do it that way. And, which, and I kind of like it this way because it does allow me to use a building pad for what I'm supposed to use it for, which is push or pull, change the depth of uh, the actual building, where the building is sitting. But then I can also hide it in section and do what I need to do um, graphically uh, after I'm, I've used the building pad. And like I said before, I've done, I've done lots of projects where I've, I've literally had multiple building pads, different types of building pads or different, uh, different foundations, different places where I have buildings showing up across the site, each at different elevations. And I've dealt with that through the different building pad types. And then after I built it, I've done basically this, what we see in section, and I just hide all the building pads because I have my floors that actually model. And so it's just the point is, at this, when I get to the point where I know that the building pad is cut and basically doing what it needs to do for the topography, I end up just turning the pads off in basically every single, not only section, but view, because I don't want to see the clipping. So something to be aware of. And, you know, I hope that this gave you enough ideas about how to use building pads and of course what they are and how they work um, but the different applications because that could be your floor you know the unfortunate thing with that is i can't add more components to it to make it truly a floor or, or something replacing my floor now i'm gonna come back to 3d i'm gonna get rid of this and you can see the clipping and this is exactly why i'm not a huge fan of keeping the building pads shown because i have to deal with this all the time so but I'm, for the sake of this i'm gonna actually delete my floor and go back to my building pad, particularly with <laughs> this sketch. And so what I can do is maybe I decide, well, I need to slope this a bit. Well, I can add a slope arrow. And, you know, this is probably more complicated than it needs to be. But, you know, we can pick really anything. But at this point, you know, at the, at the tail, maybe it's 10 feet higher, whatever. And so we can see that I can constantly actually slope this thing, which is really nice. Now, what are the applications for this? I mean, um, this can serve as a pseudo ramp, like if you're making a constant site ramp. I, I'd probably end up using the ramp. Um, a lot of times what I do if I make something, need to make something on topography that's kind of a, a specific shape, like a ramp or something, I'll make a building pad that's like flat at the bottom of that ramp so it just never comes into play and so topography is not an issue when I cut or anything and I deal with the, the rest of it like with annotations. But... If for some reason you need to like slope constantly across the site, you can do this. Now, the downside this to this, at least when we compare it to floors, is that I can only do the constant slope. I can't actually pick points. Of course, if we're familiar with floors, I can pick points and add points and change points, um, elevations across the floor. I can modify all these points. I can raise this section here. I can add more points in the middle. I can raise the, the you know there's a lot that we can do here with just floors we cannot do this kind of thing with building pads um so just know building pads are really primarily for pushing and pulling topography setting your building elevation and then basically the way i use it is i will hide it after that in almost all my views and then just use floors that i've modeled as a foundation on top of that regardless of the elevation just to match it up and then i look then after that it looks good in section 3d everywhere so that's going to do it for building pads. Pretty simple stuff. Um, it really kind of depends on how you use it. There's not a really wrong way to use it. It's just kind of the way it is. So that will do it for building pads. We've, we've looked at kind of everything we need to, the types of building pad, uh, how to change the material, things like that, hiding it and what you can do, where you might want to use it, things like that. Uh, let me know in the comments how you use it and if you use it at all or whether it's just a waste of your time or whatever you think of it, please let me know. In the next video, we're going to look at actually working with the cut and fill and seeing how building pads do impact the cut and fill using uh, the graded region tool. There's not a whole lot to that either, uh, but just stick around for the next video where we look at that particularly because I think that um, it's something you might want to track. And so uh, I will hopefully see you in the next video. Please sure to check that out. Um, but please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot and tell them that you might have learned something. So I will see you in the next Revit video. Have a wonderful and thank you very much for watching.